is a way maker. Yes, Amen. If you're at home today, you're in your office, wherever you may be, we pray that you just lift your hands and give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Just sing one more course of that way maker, if you will. I feel something happening when we realize that we serve a God that always makes a way out of nowhere. Real quietly. Just call the words. Sing the words with me real softly if you will. to Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6, we're going to look today in verses 25 through 34, we do realize that we've been walking through the book of Acts, but I'm going to lift up the text today out of Matthew 6, and I'm going to lift it up out of the New King James Version of the Bible, and I'm going to read verse 33 and 34, but see first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness, his righteousness and all these things mm. shall be added to you. Mm. Therefore, do not worry mm. about tomorrow <laughs> for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Amen. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I want to preach this morning from the subject of don't be shaken. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Don't be shaken. There are three things that we'll look at. Number one is they were disquieted. Uh -huh. The disciples were disquieted in verse 25. Secondly, they were dependents in verses 25 through 30. And then finally, Jesus had to remind them that they were different mm -hmm. in verses 31 yeah. through 34. Let me repeat it again. They were disquieted. So uh -huh. Jesus is going to address them. Secondly, he reminded them that they were dependents. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, they were different. If you would just bow your heads and pray for your own needs. Take five, ten seconds to pray for the things that you are going through in your life as we go before the throne of grace. Things that you're worried about right now, lift them up before the Lord. Our Father and our God, we come. We acknowledge that you are great, that you are greatly to be praised. And Father, we come acknowledging that sometimes we are warriors, we are fearful, and we ask you right now if you would forgive us of unbelief, of doubt and fear. Bless your people today, Lord. We all need you in ways like we have never needed you before. We pray that you comfort us, give us strength, and let us know that you promised in your word that you would never leave us, nor forsake us. Bless every person, every family, every individual that is watching this broadcast on today. We pray that you would meet them at the point of their needs. And then finally, Lord, we pray that you would save someone, restore, reclaim someone back to you, Lord, and let them know how much you love them. Father, we ask this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A man was in a hurry to catch his airplane. He ran huffing and puffing down toward his gate. He passed a guy who was dressed in a pilot uniform. The guy said to the breathless man, where are you in a hurry to go? Oh, the man said, I'm late for my plane. He proceeded to tell the guy, who, what flight he was hurrying to. The uniform for a man said to him, don't be in a hurry. I'm piloting that plane. Mm -hmm. If the pilot is chilling, <coughs> you should chill. 
<laughs> Don't stress yourself out about things unnecessarily. Uh -huh. Wait on God yes. and trust yes. that if he's taking his time, yes. we can too. Yes. Jesus in this particular text is called the Sermon on the Mountain from chapters 5 through 7. He is conducting this sermon. He's finishing up telling his disciples that you cannot serve two masters. Well. He had taught them how to pray, and now he is going to address them because he see the worry on their faces. He can feel it in their spirit. You do realize that worry is often called the respectable sin. It's respectable because you can worry by yourself and you don't realize how much you are actually worrying, so you consider it to be respectful. Listen to what Jesus shared with them. He shared with them that they were disquieted. In verse 25 of Matthew 6, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not more life than food, than the body, more than clothing. Jesus began his dialogue by saying, I say, not anyone else, but I say, do not worry. It means, the word worry in the Greek means to have a divided mind. It means people go from faith to fear. They go from fear to worry. They are emotionally divided. Grammatically, it means to stop doing it. Jesus is in essence saying his disciples are already exhibiting the characteristics of a person that worries. Worrying is an act or a practice that not only is it always already going on, but in essence, it's the text is a prohibition telling them to stop doing it. It's so needed that it's given three times in this text, in verse 25, in verse 31, and finally in verse 34. What the, were they worrying about? What to eat? What to wear? How they would look? Jesus knows all of our basic requirements for food, clothing, and shelter. He knows everything we need to survive. He's talking about life in general because we can worry so much that life can actually pass us by. A lot of persons worry about stuff that actually never happened. So Jesus strikes at the tendency, at the center of our lives around food, clothing, and oftentimes missing life's real meaning. Secondly, they were dependent. He reminded them that they were dependent upon him. Verse 26 declares, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? The birds of the air illustrates God's care for his creatures. The birds actually preach to us how unnecessary it is for us to worry. They neither work, they don't sow, they don't plant, they don't harvest, and yet God still meets their needs every day. In God's hierarchy of creation, we are more valuable than the birds. But we should not infer this, uh, that we should not work or be lazy or complacent. It, is, it was an agricultural society where they understood the principle of reaping and sowing. In 2 Thessalonians 3.10, For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Nor shall we conclude that it's wrong to sow or to reap or harvest. What Jesus is saying, he is simply saying that some persons get so caught up to his statue. Uh -huh. Worrying about the future is not only a dishonor to God, it's futile. The light demonstrates this, that with the question, there are two meanings of this verse that theologians often debate about. Number one, it could be a short person worrying about trying to get taller. In essence, it's one cubic, about 18 inches. Secondly, it refers to worrying will add to the length of one's life. So the, the, the question is a rhetorical question, and the answer being, of course not. A person that is short can't worry themselves any taller. A person that worries cannot live any longer because you worry. 
Right. It's an act that is not only already going on, but Jesus is also teaching the principle, why worry about things if you can't control it? Right. But if you can control it, he's in essence saying the things that are under your purview, under your sphere of control, yeah. don't worry about it. Uh -huh. Get up and do something. Yeah. Whatever God wants you to do, do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a rocking chair. Yeah. Many people want to rock back and forth, but you don't get anywhere. Yeah. He is saying to them, get out of the rocking chair yes, and put shoe leather on what he told you to do yeah. so you can make some progress. Finally, in verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Now some will worry as if they have enough clothing for the future. What I'm going to wear, what I'm going to put on. In reply to this, Jesus says, consider the lilies of the field. They are, in this agricultural society, they are typically unplanted, unprotected, uh -huh. they're unprized possession. They will just typically, typically be scattered out on the roadside, the countryside. Oftentimes, they will just pop up anywhere. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus is saying is, look at these things, the lilies of the field, that just pop up. Mm -hmm. And verse 29 says, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Mm -hmm. Jesus says that Solomon on his best day, if he had on all of his royal guard, if he had his crown on his head, if he had the best things that he had in his wardrobe, he still wouldn't be able to look better, more pristine than one of the lilies of the field. Well, I believe one of the lessons is that we are to grow where we are planted. Oftentimes, God places us in a ministry. God places us in an area. And part of the principle is we have to learn how to grow yeah. where we are planted. Yeah. Psalm 23, 5. You, you read the text. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Sometimes we are looking for other places to be, other things to do, yeah. rather than doing where God doing ministry where God wants us to do it. So the psalmist said, you prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Well, Your enemies may not ever leave you, well, uh -huh. well, but God has a smorgasbord well, set it in front of you. Yes, All you have to do is just eat and give God some glory. Yes, Listen to verse 30. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, uh -huh. Will he not much more clothe you, yeah. owe you of little faith? Yeah. Now, grass is typically used in the Old Testament to illustrate the brevity and the frailty of life. Uh -huh. You can read it in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 to 7. It compares grass as withering. And, yeah. and grass does something. Grass grows, yeah. uh -huh. but then your grass is mowed down. And the grass that you mow down, it still grow back. Well, well, I don't care how much you mow it, grass always going to grow back. So what Jesus is saying to them, if God can let the grass grow, the grass be mowed down, and it grows back, can it be big enough to take care of you? Yes, right. Can God take care of all of your needs? I'm glad y'all are part of this here today. This cuts at the heart of what their worry and anxiety was all about. Mm -hmm. Listen to how he ends it, this verse. All ye oh, of yeah. little faith. Mm -hmm. It also could mean two things. It could mean to be a challenge to strengthen a person's faith. There are persons who already have faith, but sometimes our faith has to be strengthened. Yeah. But secondly, yeah. it could be a rebuke because a person's faith is terribly weak. There are persons who proclaim to have great faith, but when trouble comes, they fail to put all of their trust in God. Have I got a witness? I brought a witness with me today. Have I got a witness? Thirdly, don't be shaken. He reminds them that they are different. In verse 31, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? 
or what shall we wear? The conclusion is we should not be worried, anxious, or preoccupied with food, clothing, and shelter. Now, this problem is not a psychological or emotional problem. Uh -huh. He simply says, don't worry, trust God. Yes. Amen. If you're here today, yes. don't worry, Amen. trust God. Trust. Listen to what the verse says. Because the Gentiles worry. Yes. The Gentiles here are pictured of unconverted people who live for a mere accumulation of material things, such as food, clothing, and shelter. That's why they focus more on what name brand they're wearing, uh -huh. what designer name they're wearing. Mm -hmm. That is so important to them. But what Jesus' is essence is saying, those things are important to them, but they have left out Christ. Mm -hmm. Your stuff doesn't mean who you are. Uh -huh. What we possess is not who we are. Our life is in Christ. Yes. Ephesians yes. 2.12. That at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. There are persons who have everything, but they don't have any hope in God. I don't know yeah, about you, but yeah. I'm glad yes. I got some hope yes. in yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. In verse 32, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek, but your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Yes. The unbelievers would be in such a pursuit of things uh -huh. that they could never be sure that they are saved mm. enough to go to heaven. So they try to measure what they possess with what heaven has to offer, and they feel as if they can accumulate more things, they'll never come to the conclusion that they really trust God. Well, because there's always the danger always. of something unavoidable happening. Yeah. Well, you put your trust in things, yes. horses, men, and there will always be something yeah. that can transpire, that can shake the equilibrium of your faith. Yeah. We yeah. are not facing the coronavirus, but yeah. those of us that are believers in Jesus, we are not worried. Yeah. We are not moving. We are not upset. And the reason we are not upset is because our God yes. is still on the throne. Yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. I get the broadcast that someone kicked him off the throne, yeah. we're going to keep on praising him. Yeah. We're going to keep on serving him. Yeah. Come on, with me today. with the Christians. Mm. For I have a father who knows all of my needs. Yes. How do we know that? Because according to Romans 8, 32, he who did not spare his own son, mm. but delivered him up for us all, yes. how shall he not with him also yes. freely give us all things? Yes. Paul is saying, if God didn't hold back his son, well, well, knowing who we are, yes. how we would act, well, what we've done, yes, right. how can God hold back the things that we need? That's right. I don't know about you, but I'm glad right. right. that he knows how to meet me at the point of all of yes, us. Oh, right. Matthew 6, he says he knows what you need yes. even before you ask. Show up. In other words, before you can even utter the words out of your mouth, well, God has already lined things up Thank you, Lord. to meet you at your needs. Yes, sir. Verse 33 says, but seek first. The kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. The Lord, therefore, makes a covenant with his followers. God says, in effect, if you will put God's interest first in your life, I will guarantee your future needs. The word seek is an interesting word. It means to go after. It means to pursue, to desire, to search for. God is saying that if you are going to be unshaken, you have to put God first. Make him a priority. Make his mission. Make his purposes a priority in your life. And everybody is seeking something. So he says, you come after me. And look what the promise is. I will add. The word add in the Greek means to Place alongside. Mm -hmm. God is saying that when we seek after him, as we go about doing ministry, everything we need, 
He will add to us as we are going along. That's good news right there. Yes, so he says, focus on God. Yes. Do what's right. Yes. And you will never lack nothing. Yes. You will never go without yes. the necessities of life. It means that every time you look around, you can see blessings in your life. Yes. Yes. There are blessings that have come your way, have come my way. I'm reminded of Psalm 37. Verse 25, when David says, I've seen a lot in my life. Come on. I've been young and now I'm old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for But David said, I've been through some, some stuff. Yes, sir. He said, but now I was a young man, but now I'm an old man. And I've seen God meet every one of my needs. Yeah, I've seen God meet every one of my children's yeah, needs. Yes, every one of my grandchildren's yeah, needs. Yeah, I don't yeah, know who I'm going to do, but don't be yeah, shaken. Because God is still on the yeah, throne. Yeah, yeah, Verse 34 yeah, yeah. summarizes, Therefore do not worry yeah. about tomorrow. Uh, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Yeah, yeah. Sufficient for the day yeah. is its own trouble. Yeah. This is the gospel. Yes. This is the Christian's uh -huh. gospel. Yes. This is not our 401 plan. Well, yeah. This is not our 503B plan. Uh -huh. This is not our social yeah. security plan. Well, yeah. This is our eternal plan. Yeah. We are to seek God's kingdom every day. Yes. Yes. There's a double level responsibility. It is to live for the Lord, trusting him for the future with unshakable confidence that he will provide for you. Yeah, yeah. A job is simply a means of providing for current needs. Everything above that is invested in the work of the Lord. We are called to live one day at a time. So what Jesus is telling his disciples is don't borrow tomorrow's trouble. Well, You've got enough going on right now. Well, if you can just live day by day, there are plenty of things to think about. There are plenty, plenty of issues to pray about. Some people are frozen with fear over what might happen over the next two or three months. Well, well, but I'm reminded of Corey Ten Boom, who was in a consecration camp in Germany. She said one on one occasion, worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrow. Well, it empties today of strength. Yeah. You're going to always focus about tomorrow. You're going to forget yeah. that you need strength for the day. Right. We don't have a God yes. that we have to carry. <coughs> we got a God that carries us. Yes. We have a God rather that carries us. Don't be shaken. Remember, warriors don't trust God. Mm. Right. And those who trust God don't worry. Yeah. May I say to you today, Amen. keep looking up. Amen. God is on your side. Yes. He has no rival. Mm. He That's has right. no equal. No equal. That's There's right. nobody that is bigger than him. There's nobody larger than him. Well, There's nobody like him. Do I have a witness? Yes. You don't let the people know that God is able. Come on and tell somebody God is able. God is a good God. I read a story once of three young boys that was walking in the woods. And one boy asked the question, if we were all trees, what kind of tree would you be? One young man said, let me start. First, I will be a pine tree. It's tall. It keeps its beauty year round. Uh -huh. The second young man said, I will be an oak tree. Uh -huh. I want to take up a lot of space. I want to be seen. The third young man had his head in his hand and said, I want to be a palm tree. The first two young men asked him, what do you know about a palm tree? He said, well, I once went down to Florida. And I saw a palm tree, and while I was there, a storm came. And when I think about it, the palm tree is the only tree that is remaining after the storm. When I look at the pine tree, it's tall, but soon as the storm comes, it's broken in half. And when I look at the oak tree, it's easily uprooted. But when the storm comes, the palm tree can take it. Because the stronger the storm, the deeper its roots go down and wrap itself around the rock. So no matter what storm comes your way, when you are a pine tree, you can even be, easily be broken in half. 
When you are an oak tree, you can easily have your life uprooted. But when you are a palm tree, you are wrapped around the rock. And the storms may come. The winds may blow. But the deeper I the trouble, the deeper I go. Because Jesus is our rock. David said it best in Psalm 2 Samuel 22, 1 through 4. Then David spoke to the Lord the words of this song. Who the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hands of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul and said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress yes. and my deliverer, the God of my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation. Yes. He's my stronghold and my refuge. Yes. He's my savior. Yes. You save me from all of the violence. I will call yes. upon the Lord yes. who is worthy to be praised. Yes. So shall I be saved from all of my enemies. Yes. I don't know what I'm preaching to today, but I won't be shaken because I'm holding on to the rock. Yes. And when I'm not holding on to the rock, the rock is holding on.
have a great week. Remember the announcements for the church. Uh, all of them, govern yourselves accordingly. May God bless you and have a great week.